and country legions to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Robert Cunningham. Here. John Cole is absent. Joanna Rivera is absent. Scott Miller. Present. Richard Sharp. Here. Brent Parker. Here. Daniel Niemeyer. Present. And Amy Gross, Court Judge, is absent. Jamie Conner is here. Present. David Austin Tellington. Present. We'll start tonight with a public hearing. We have several of them. Uh, number one is Birchwood Farms Voluntary Annexation. Uh, attorneys Review of Legal. Thank you. Uh, reading of Ordinance 1288, Birchwood Farms Voluntary Annexation. Mr. Parker, by his title only, please. Yeah, Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, Ordinance Number 1288, the ordinance annexing certain contiguous land to the Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, and all matters related thereto. Thank you. Uh, next is resolution 1219, which is the fiscal plan and policy for annexation of Birchwood Farms. Uh, Mr. Parker, by its title only, explanation, Mr. Austin. Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, resolution number 12, resolution number 1219, a resolution of the Cedar Lake Town Council to approve a fiscal plan and policy to propose annexation of a parcel of real property to the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, and all matters related thereto. Thank you, Mr. Austin. This is the uh, fiscal plan component of the voluntary annexation application. This uh, follows the requirements of law for understanding what fiscal plan and policy there will be upon the annexation of this parcel into the town is a 68.7 acre proposed parcel for annexation. It's uh, proposed for residential development. Uh, the zoning district classification will be residential. Uh, the requirements of the town's ordinances and uh, policies will be required of the developer when uh, the development occurs on annexation, and this is a necessary step under the statute. One correction. Uh, it lists me as Robert C. Carnahan instead of Robert H. Carnahan. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Let the record reflect the correction. Are there any remonstrators for or against? Any remonstrators? Any remonstrators? No remonstrators. Town Council discussion? All right, are we doing uh, the ordinance or just the resolution? First? Only the resolution tonight. The ordinance will be adopted if, or considered for adoption in your main meetings. All right. Uh, I, I would just indicate, since we're not going to do that, we'll, in Section 3 of the ordinance, will that have the zoning district and will it also indicate what the ward will be? Yeah. All right. Any other council discussion? Okay, uh, consideration town council uh, decision on resolution 1219. Is there a motion to approve? So, motion by council member Carnahan. Second. Second by council member Sharp. Are there questions or discussion on the motion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan. Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. And Lee Meyer? Yes, motion carries 5-0. Uh, next item, item two is ordinance number 1291. How do you pronounce that? Is that? Pro. Pro? Pro Platted Easement Vacation. 15004 Cary Street. <coughs> Attorney Review of Legals. Legals in order of public hearing may be conducted. Thank you. Uh, opening remarks. 
Mr. President, this is the continuation of the other platted easement vacations that we had, I believe it was early March, late February, to continue those rear yard easements. As we had reported, there would be other ones coming. Mm -hmm. This item and your next item um, continue on that process so that everything is equal in that area. Okay. And also, it, it's, it was a 30, uh, uh, 30 foot and they took eight foot off and that leaves 22 and that's a lot 33 and as you mentioned the next two are the same and it was asked if there would be additional ones in the future and they took care of all this uh, with just these and I don't believe there will be any others coming down the pipe. Okay. <coughs> uh, reading of ordinance 1291 planted easement vacation Mr. Parker by title only please. Thomas here, Lake Lake County, Indiana, Ordinance Number 1291, an ordinance vacated by the easement in the town of Cedar Lake Lake County, Indiana. Thank you. Are there any remonstrators for or against? Any remonstrators for or against? Any remonstrators? Remonstration is closed. Town Council discussion. As what Bob said, this is in the uh, Lindsway. Uh, subdivision and the uh, utility companies have checked off on this as well is still having access to the needed uh, easements for utilities so it will not obstruct any work that needs to happen uh, town council decision on ordinance 1291 is there a motion to approve so moved motion by council member parker i'll second seconded by council member miller questions or discussion on the motion roll call robert Cunningham. yes ralph miller yes richard Shire. yes Greg Parker? Yes. Yes, motion carries 5 0. Would this be, could, could we suspend the rules for this as a public hearing? Okay. Is there a motion to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading of Ordinance 1291? So moved. Motion by Council Member Miller, seconded by Council Member Parker. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Yes, motion carries 5-0. Mr. Parker, by his title only, please, Ordinance 1291. Town of Sierra Lake, Lake County, Indiana, Ordinance number 1291, an ordinance vacating a planted easement in the town of Sierra Lake, Lake County, Indiana, and all matters related there, too. Thank you. You've heard the second reading of Ordinance 1291. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Motion by Council Member Sharp. <coughs> Second by Council Member Parker. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Yes. Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> Item 3 is Ordinance 1292, Diamond Peak Platted Easement Vacation, 15010 and 15016 Cary Street, uh, Attorney Review of Legals. Legals in order for public hearing. Thank you. Opening remarks. Town Administrator? Mr. President, again, this is the continuation of the easements as we discussed in the previous item. Thank you. Reading of Ordinance 1292, Platted Easement Vacation, Mr. Parker, by his title only. Oh, it's really a great county in the end of Ordinance 1292, an ordinance vacating a platted easement in the town of Sierra Lake Lake County, and all matters related there, too. Thank you. Uh, next, we have remonstrators. Are there any remonstrators for or against? Any remonstrators? Any remonstrators? No remonstrators. Town Council discussion. Any discussion? Uh, this this is the same as I said before, but this is for lots 34 and 35. Thank you. Town Council decision on the first reading of Ordinance 1292. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Council Member Parker. Second. Second by Council Member Sharp. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Lee Meyer? Yes, motion carries 5 0. Uh, is there a motion to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading? So moved. Motion by Council Member Parker? Second. Second by Council Member Carnahan. Questions or discussion on the motion? Roll call vote. Robert Carnahan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Yeah. Randall Lee Meyer? Yes, motion carries 5 0. Second reading of Ordinance 1292 by his title only, please, Mr. Parker. Tell us you're in the county in the Ordinance number 1292, the Ordinance 1292, the Ordinance 
County, Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, and all that are related there too. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt Ordinance 1292? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Parker. Second. Seconded by Councilmember Miller. Questions or discussion on the motion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Craig Parker? Yes. Randall Neeland? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, item number four is Ordinance 1290, it's Community Crossing Grant Fund. Should that be in there, Jill? Mr. President, for the flow of the next <coughs> public hearing item, we have to have the okay. ordinance Very good. establish the fund first. Mr. Parker, by his time only, please, Ordinance 1290. Out of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, Ordinance Number 1290, an ordinance establishing town, local road, and bridge matching grant, fund community crossings initiative for the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, all matters related there too. Here too, I'm sorry. Thank you. You've heard the first reading of Ordinance 1290, Community Crossing Grant Fund. Is there a motion by the council to approve the first reading? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Sharp. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Councilmember Parker. Are there questions or discussion? Yes. Uh, Jill, on uh, that uh, resolution coming up, it's uh, 549550 uh, but we got $690,000. Is this just a portion of it and we'll end up using all that money? We were awarded $690,000. However, since the project costs came in less than engineers' estimates, um, and the way community crossing grant funds are distributed, it takes the total construction cost that was actually bid and takes out the contingencies, which that project had a 20% contingency on, and then it divides that cost in half. So we were allotted the $529,000. All right, so we won't be able to use the remaining money? No, we were only awarded what the contract bid price was. And are we, and we're applying for community crossing grants for next year? It is anticipated once they, once they Do we put the awards out. Okay, do we have a list of what those items are going to be? We're currently identifying them. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Neeland? Yes, motion carries 5 0. Um, is there a motion to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Miller? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Yes, motion carries 5 0. Mr. Parker, Ordinance 1290 by its title only, please. Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, Ordinance Number 1290. An ordinance establishing a town, local road, and, and bridge grant and community crossings initiative for the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, all matters related here, too. Thank you. You've heard the second reading of Ordinance 1290. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Miller. Second. Second by Councilmember Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Channel Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, item 5 is resolution number 1218. <coughs> Additional appropriation. Community Crossing Grant Fund, uh, Attorney Review of Legal. I don't have legals on this. No? Um, Amy passed that on to me. The publication was made timely in the Times on April 5th and the Post on April 6th. And um, the affidavits were received by the publishers. So she okay. does have those on. Okay, thank you. O opening remarks, Town Administrator. Council, this is the resolution. Um, authorizing the additional appropriation because we received these funds after last year's budget cycle so by setting the fund in the previous ordinance now we're appropriating the funds which we have received from the state for use on our parish avenue road project in the amount of five hundred twenty nine thousand five hundred fifty dollars thank you uh reading of resolution 1218 community crossing grant fund mr parker by his title please Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, rate resolution number 1218, a resolution authorizing an additional appropriation declaring that an emergency exists. Thank you. Are there any remonstrators for or against? 
Any remonstrators? Are there any remonstrators? No remonstrators. Town Council discussion. Is there any discussion? <coughs> okay, Town Council decision. Is there a motion to approve resolution 1218 as read? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Miller. Second. Seconded by Councilmember Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Frederick Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Neumeyer? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. We'll now move to public comment on agenda items. If you have public comment on agenda items, come forward, state your name and address for the record. Any public comment? Any public comment? Is there any public comment? Public comment is closed. We have our consent agenda, which is the minutes of the April 3rd, 2018 public meeting. Claims all town funds $153,745.33. Wastewater operating $123,257.65. Water utility $42,179.17. Stormwater $5,933.23. Payroll for April 5th, 2018, $238,971.42. We have donations to DARE of $4,504 and VIPs of $1,505. Fireworks special permit for June 9th, 2018. And non-functional equipment for disposal. Is there a motion to accept and waive the reading of the minutes and accept the consent agenda as listed? So moved. Motion by Council Member Miller. Second. Seconded by Council Member Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Robert Cunningham? No. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Neumeyer? Yes. Motion carries four to one. <coughs> uh, ordinances and resolutions. <coughs> Item one is confirming resolution 1220, appropriation transfers. Uh, Mr. Parker, by title only, please, and Deputy Clerk Nagy, an explanation. Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana. Confirming resolution number 1220, a resolution confirming the authorization of appropriation <laughs> transfers by the clerk treasurer for the following funds during budget year 2018. Thank you. Deputy Clerk? These are the, are the um, resolutions that have already been made being offered to the council to confirm. Uh, they were uh, from the general fund, the recreation department, $15 to uh, the IPRA dues, which is the Indiana Park and Recreation Association, uh, $9,150 from Economic Development Road Improvement to Attorney and the Local Roads and Streets, $10,011.50 for Miscellaneous Services to Road Stop. Thank you. Question. Uh, the Road Fund Improvement uh, we're transferring that from road fund to attorney. What would that road improvement funds be used for? It's actually economic development to attorney. Yeah, but it says road improvement underneath. Economic from the line item road, road improvement because there's a surplus in there that's not going to be used. We couldn't use that anywhere else? It hasn't been. You know, I would have to talk with Amy on that. Uh, my concern, I think we've got a lot of roads that need improvement, and I hate to take money on a road improvement. So, I, I, Tim, do you have any idea what that's? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. You, you have needs in the street for funds, correct? I have no idea which, actually, which fund that's being <coughs> All right. I don't have that. Uh, Paper, That's not a fund in, in your auspices, right? I, I do not believe so. Okay. We need action on this tonight. Council, if I may, Amy's note on here. These transfers were already approved um, and have active dates of when she made these transfers between the major major budget classifications. The manual, <coughs> manual journal entries were approved by you as part of your consent agenda in the months of um, March and February. So the transfers have already been completed. If you would like but further they stick explanation, out, they oriented. stick out more than they did in the journals. So. Okay. Any other discussion on this? 
Is there a motion to approve the confirming resolution 1220? So moved. Motion by Council Member Sharp. I'll second. Seconded by Council Member Miller. Are there questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? No. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries four to one. <coughs> Item two is resolution 1221, authorizing a second amendment to the joint interlocal <coughs> joint interlocal cooperation agreement regarding the operation of a single public safety answering point. Uh, Mr. Parker, Resolution 1221 by its title only, please. And Mr. Austin, explanation. A separate one here. Town of Cherville, Town of Cherville, Lake County, Indiana, Town of Sierra Lake, Lake County, Indiana. Second amended joint resolution number 1221. Second amended joint resolution of the town councils of the towns of Cherville and Cedar Lake approving entry into an operation of a single public safety answering point known as the South County PSAT for the effort aforesaid <coughs> participating units and all matters related thereto. Thank you. Mr. Austin? This is the amendment to the local <coughs> agreement that you entered with Cherville related to the clarification and definition of administrative processes, uh, handling of um, payments, the assignment of the Cherville Clerk Treasurer as fiscal agent, the creation of the executive board and the operations board and their conduct and activities. Um, just, it was just a modernization, if you will, of a document that had initially been adopted by you with then uh, Sheriff on St. John in 2014, amended a year later with the departure of St. John or the departure of St. John. And now this is the fine-tuning to the handling of the business of the entity. Thank you. You've heard the uh, reading of resolution 1221 and explanations. Is there a motion by the council to approve? So moved. Motion by council member Miller. Second. Second by council member Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? No. Mm -hmm. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Yes. Motion carries four to one. Uh, ordinance number 1293, traffic code amendment. Mr. Parker, by its title only, please. Explanation, Mr. Austin. That's 1293, correct? Yes, sir. Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, ordinance number 1293. An ordinance amending town traffic rules pertaining to speed limits and codified in the town code 71-12 as amended repealing all ordinances and town code provisions or parts thereof herewith and all matters related thereto. Thank you. That's the first reading of ordinance 1293 traffic code amendment. Mr. Austin. Your Town Administrator. Guesses. Council, as recommended at your last council meeting, Chief recommended a speed limit change on Lakeshore Drive from 133rd to Hilltop area. After discussions, it was narrowed down to that area being Lakeshore Drive in each direction from West 129th Place to West 133rd Avenue. And additionally, addressing the speed limit originally proposed was 20 miles an hour. We've recommended 25 miles per hour. It is our recommendation to approve this first reading of the ordinance. But one of the things we noticed as we were reviewing town code and amending Town Code subsection 71-12 was that there is a speed limit provision on Parish Avenue from West 137th to the 14900 block of Parish Avenue, which was prior to Lindsway being annexed into the town. And we would make the recommendation that we amend and add in Parish Avenue as part of this amendment for your second reading to allow for that speed limit to be 30 miles per hour as is posted 
from 137 down to 151st, which is our corporate limits. Okay. Uh, <laughs> questions on uh, why did we go from 20 to 25? What was the reasoning? Part of it was the discussion you had as a council with the golf carts. Yes, as soon as it's below, tw it's 20 or below, it allows the golf carts to be on that main thoroughfare. And that was the discussion that you guys brought up during your discussion. I think five, five miles is a little bit of uh, uh, fast still for that. Uh, I thought we were going with 20. Uh, Police Chief Colson, do you have any comments on this? Again, I think it was um, after we did the research uh, based on the new ordinance for golf cart uh, access on the road roadways and the speed limit that they could operate under, um, there would be a conflict in that uh, particular area. Okay, thank you. Uh, you've heard the uh, first reading of Ordinance 1293 Traffic Code Amendment. Uh, we'll only do one reading tonight because there are recommended additional amendments. Is there a motion by the Council to approve Ordinance 1293 with the suggested amendments? So moved. Motion by Council Member Sharp. Is there a second? Oh, sorry. Second by Council Member Parker. Are there questions or discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Neiman? Yes, motion carries 5-0. Second reading will be at the next meeting. Uh, BZA item one is Thomas Philpot, 13019 Wicker Avenue Special Use Variance. The Board of Zoning Appeals sends a favorable recommendation to the Town Council for, a, for the special use variance to allow the petitioner to build a concrete patio for outdoor dining and alcohol with the following stipulations. Concrete ballards six feet apart in front of building and 10 feet apart on the south side of building and install no parking signs on the south side of parking lot and to include findings of fact by a vote of five in favor and zero against upon motion duly made and seconded at the public meeting held on April 12, 2018. Is there a petitioner present? Yes. You come forward, Mr. Philpott. Sir. So are you uh, looking to uh, build a, an outdoor dining area? Yes. Where is that going to be? Uh, I can't picture it by your restaurant there, Del Sassimo. Oh, just, uh, you, if you're facing the building, or you just get away. Okay. Or they going to take one parking spot away. It basically, it just extends 20 feet out to the end where the car will be parked and uh, goes along uh, <coughs> 26 feet across the front and six foot across the side so we can um, enter through the rear door there on the side. How many people do you think would be able to be seated out there? Um, probably four tables of four in the front and maybe four or five tables along the uh, south side wall. You know, a couple of, maybe two seaters, three seaters over there. I want to say you've done a great job with that restaurant. It's really, uh, really turned around under your leadership, so thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Is there a, a motion to approve the special use variance as recommended with the findings of fact by the BZA? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Miller. Second. Second by Councilmember Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Meyer. Yes, motion carries 5 0. Keep up the good work now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, item two is uh, Yoder Buildings of Northwest Indiana, 12615 Wicker Avenue Special Use Variance. The Board of Zoning Appeals sends an unfavorable recommendation to the Town Council for the Special Use Variance to allow the petitioner, Yoder Buildings of Northwest Indiana, to run a sales office and use the parking lot for storage shed building displays and to have multiple businesses on a lot in a community business B2 zoning district due to a lack of attendance at public hearing for submission by petitioner. By a vote, vote of five in favor and zero against upon motion duly made and seconded at the public meeting held on April 12th, 2018. So the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals has sent in you a unanimous unfavorable recommendation. Is there a motion by the council to uh, uphold the unfavorable recommendation? 
Well, to the, deny the special use variance based on the recommendation of the Board of Zoning Appeals. So moved. Motion by Councilmember Parker. Second. Second by Councilmember Sharp. Are there questions or discussion? The uh, discussion on that is uh, there, there is the belief that uh, the guy was going to pull out anyways. Okay. But there, there wasn't a, anything official. Okay. So there's a motion and a second to deny. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Frederick Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Yes. Yes, motion carries 5-0. Uh, old business, item one is the 2018 Ambulance, EMS, and Fire Protection Services Agreement. This was deferred from February 20, 2018, March 2nd, 2018, March 20th, 2018, April 3rd, 2018, public meetings. We have the Hanover Township Trustee present with us tonight, Mr. Yes. Lopez. I'm here. <coughs> Before we get started, I want to... Uh, clarify the record um, at the last council meeting I gave a presentation uh, based on information that we obtained from our financial advisors that was incomplete uh, that talked about the cumulative capital fire funds uh, so I want to make sure that the record was clear that uh, the cumulative capital fire funds that the township has under its uh, control is uh, derived solely from the unincorporated residents of Hanover Township and I also want to make clear as well, uh, at that meeting, uh, was stated that I had the sole uh, decision making on the contract. Uh, after further review, I have the executive power to negotiate the contract, but it would have to be approved by my legislative body, the board. And I'll bet they don't want to approve the contract that we're... Well, this contract that we put forth, was already approved by my board. They had reviewed it. We had to yeah, we're, we're not going to approve that contract. Mitch, can you give us the, the highlights of the, the contract that your board approved? Uh, in the in the contract, uh, we are providing 115,000 for fire and EMS. That is every penny that we are receiving for fire and EMS. Um, we have a cumulative fund um, that roughly we get about forty thousand dollars a year. With the limited fund, we have 120,000 uh, put away. Um, that particular fund is for capital improvement assets. It's for the township to save up funds for major purchases that will later on would be titled in the township's name. Mitch, per our discussion before, mm -hmm. we still have the issue of county related residents subsidizing the township. Not been addressed. The, you, know, you come on up, Rich, if you want. Uh, you better read your <coughs> you better read the statute, Greg. <coughs> that's not the way it is, sir. Well that's the way it is per oh. call, Rich, the way things are right now. Let us know how you really feel, Greg. Just lay it out there. Go ahead, Mitch. Well Rich, well, Rich well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm not finished. Mr. Niemeyer, would you like to come up and you're going to address Mr. Parker? In the, in, the meet, in the meeting where we had to vote for the fire territory, you said we never asked for more money. And we didn't realize that we were going to need to ask for more money because we were pursuing a fire territory con contract or, or a co cooperation for a fire territory. Now we're asking for more money because we need it to run the fire department. That's why we're asking for money. Well, <coughs> the proposal we have in the contract is what we can pay and we will pay. Well, and that's all we have. So, so the statement that you made, we never asked for the money. It's, you, you would have more money if we, it, well, so. if we asked for it. If we asked for it, that's not the case anymore. Well, I don't recall making that. That's statement. exactly what you said when you had the dialogue with Julie Rivera about. You said the township didn't pay their fair share. That's exactly. Oh, that, what I you didn't said. say that. She said that. You said you never asked for any. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Greg, I'm not here to argue with you about it. I'd just like to see town council put this to a vote one way or the other. So then we can move on, whatever we have to do. It hey. is a fair proposal, and that's all I can say to you. What the township receives currently is the 115. We'll give it every single penny of that in this contract. We normally get levy about $40,000 in the cumulative funds. 
uh, which we are committing to spend that equipment. We get about 20,000 from blood, and we are committing that to purchase an equipment. Uh, the total value of this contract is $180,000. That is everything that we are receiving. The 120000 that we have uh, put away, um, again, we have that right because we are saving up for additional purchases in the future. We will never deny equipment that is needed for the fire department. All we are asking is the cumulative funds have been set up to where we are able to buy equipment for the township to cooperate with the provider, which in this case would be City Lake so basically, Community Basically what you're proposing is we leave it the exact same way that it is with the strings attached to run the fire department. It is not strings attached. Again, we do as with Rich, the Rich, I, told, I, I told you in the last meeting, I'm sorry folks, because there's things I need. I told you in the last meeting, you were involved in this fire territory planning from the very beginning. Yes. I don't believe that you get anything from your advisory board from the very beginning. The town spent money and resources and time on pursuing it. All you guys had to do was have a meeting say, hey, we don't want to do a fire territory. We could have moved right on down the road. Waste all this time, effort, energy, and the taxpayers' money. Not to mention the, 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 the desperation of the center township folks. And you bring the same doggone contract in here and expect us to vote on it. It is a fair contract. It is not a fair contract. It's not fair to the folks in Center Township, for sure. That might be for the folks in Hanover Township, and it certainly is for the unincorporated township, <coughs> but it's not for the folks in Center Township, and you know it. So, Mitch, can, can you clarify out of that 120000 what, what give an example of what, those, what, what types of things that money can be spent on? That money can be spent on the fire truck, it can be spent on land, uh, it can be spent for the building of a substation, it can be spent for, I believe the fire chiefs stated that they have some equipment that's outdated, it's not up to date, and it is would be a major purchase uh, that needs to be replaced. And does, we can assist with those. Does the statute specifically say major purchase and does it define a major purchase? Uh, it's um, capital assets and repairs to township equipment. Okay, so so what capital assets, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean buildings like, let's say the fire station now needed a, a major well, a, a repair? In the past, we have assisted with bunk gear, uh, we have assisted with respirators, Okay. We've assisted with the um, snow, ice, water uh, vehicle, and obviously the newest truck in the fleet uh, was also purchased by the township. So we do provide equipment um, that we believe is needed when it is brought to our attention. Okay, because, I mean, the, the fire department covers the largest square mileage of an area in the unincorporated area, so there's there's definitely more equipment usage outside of the town when it comes to per call, so to speak. So that's why I wanted just some clarification on how those funds work. Um, the uh, the LOIT that you get from the county, does that have any designated statutory limitations on it? It does not, but I added it on that 65000 because, again, what I'm receiving from the levy for the human funds is only 40000 So sometimes a little bit higher, it will be less, but so put them both together on this contract. So that's 65000 on that contract plus the one fifteen. Correct. And, and how would that uh, money be accounted for? Because I know with the CUME fund, you've got statutory limitations. Would the township, um, would, would the town submit the invoice for what the uh, the money was spent on to the township? Correct. Correct. Okay. Or if, the, if it's a major purchase that the town is planning to do, you could let us know or we can do the invoice directly. <coughs> so we would pay the vendor directly from our own account, which is actually our preferred way of doing it. So so who would who would make the request? The fire chief or I would expect the council 
uh, possibly. Uh, it would be in, in the past because we were contracting with a volunteer fire department. Uh, the chief would come uh, to our meetings and he would make those requests. Um, because it is a municipal fire department now, um, I'm not sure how you would want the protocol to be. So uh, let's just say, for instance, there was a major purchase that the chief was going to make and you wanted the, the vendor to bill you direct. Wouldn't the township board then want influence over who was awarded the bid or, or how the, the process went? Well, for the most part, they take care of them. I know the chief tries to look for the best deals, um, and he does a great job negotiating, and he normally communicates very well with us. Um, we haven't had an issue in the past. I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is from like a, an administrative standpoint, and, and our town administrator could probably speak better. She was the former <laughs> chief deputy clerk about how bills are paid through the town of Cedar Lake. Can you talk a little bit about that process, Joe? Well, one of the, the processes is for the inventory <coughs> and capital assets and maintaining those records for the town as it is a municipal owned department now, is making sure we're paying for or invoicing you for those services so that way we can maintain those records that are needed right. in the clerk's office. So from, from an administrative standpoint, would it be better for the money to go through the town first and then be invoiced to the township? It depends on, on the item. If it's a capital asset, uh, we would like it to go through the township so we can maintain title of that item. Okay, and, and why would you want to maintain title so you could pull it away at some point? Not so we can pull it away. We have no plans to start our own fire department. We don't have any plans to contract with any other fire department, but it is what's recommended by the Department of Local Government Finance. Uh, the, and the statute itself for the trustee's office to maintain ownership of those items. Okay. Now in the past, normally um, what we had done prior while it was still uh, a lot of times we went on certain items, we just split the cost. Um, that was before it became a municipal fire department. So I spoke with the chief, you know, the, the township has a fire truck currently at the station. Yes. And over the last couple of years, we've spent about 37000 on that truck to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And that's come out of the town's general fund. Mm -hmm. So how would we handle a situation like that? Uh, we can have a discussion. Again, at this time, uh, we provide the equipment and the apparatus, and the town has maintained it in the past. So you're going to maintain title on a vehicle that we're maintaining, fueling, and insuring. And, and if, you, if you want to, theoretically, you could pull that piece of equipment away and it's gone. Plus, we're taking a liability for it as well. <clears throat> and then we're staffing it too, and, and part of what wasn't calculated in um, some of our earlier discussions is the cost of the uh, benefits package for our firefighters is incorporated into our total employees benefits package. So if you pulled some of that stuff out, it adds about an additional 150 to 200,000 onto the actual cost of the firefighting service. So there's there's a lot that goes into this stuff if we're going to staff equipment because you can have a truck and if you got nobody in a truck, right. I understand you can go that. fight a uh, fire. We don't just provide equipment. Again, we are adding the 115,000 that we're getting from our and EMX. Hey, Mitch, is this a take it or leave it deal tonight? <laughs> well, this is the fifth time that it's been brought up. Uh, I would definitely like to walk out of here with a contract. Hmm. I'd like to walk out of here with a contract. <laughs> it's been five times. We, You're not going to walk, I don't I, think I, I, I walk not, out of here with this We're not contract. talking about a contract for 2019. We're talking about a contract for 2018. Um, I'm supposed to make my first payment in six weeks, and I still don't have a contract. Can I ask a question, Mitch, about what Greg had brought up earlier about the professional fees that were associated with the, uh, the studies and work done on the fire territory? Um, was, that, was there a discussion at your board meeting about how uh, the township would take care of their portion of those? Uh, that was not, uh, we were not asked uh, if we would take on those fees. Um, 
we had a discussion where I wanted to possibly go with Amba mm -hmm. and offer to pay part of that because I knew they cost a little bit more. Uh, the town decided to go with uh, London Witty uh, and there was no discussion on yeah. compensating them for their services. So are you proposing that there won't be any compensation for those services? Uh, the township will not compensate for those services, uh, especially in light of the information and the duties that they perform from the town. If I believe, and talking to my board, if we would have used another advisor, the fire territory could possibly have gone through. Um, I talked to Rich, who never trusted um, what the lady from London really had to say. Uh, it was just not presented properly. I don't think they did a good job. And uh, the township will not pay for their duty. What's, what's the date of our next public meeting? May 1st. May 1st. May, May 1st. So, so we went through all of this stuff and we're just going to get stuck with the bill. This is kind of a sticky deal. I'll tell you a little about London Witty. Yes. I'm, I'm pretty dismayed. With, with what happened throughout this process as well, and, and that's been communicated to them. And um, not in an extremely uh, friendly way, but also not in an unprofessional way. Um, they have helped our town tremendously to obtain a double A minus bond rating, uh, refinance and finance um, numerous infrastructure bonds, uh, equipment bonds, um, tax, I mean, they've done a, a full scale job for us. Now, what we saw in this, this fire territory wasn't the optimal work product that we would like to have. Um, but I think it is, a, it is really unfair to say you're just not going to pay because you didn't like them. Uh, you were a part of this. Your board was a part of this. You voluntarily were a part of it. Yes. And I have a problem with that, Mitch, that, that, that your board and you would say, we're not going to pay that bill. We're going to send you that bill. Okay. I don't even know how much they charge. Because I guess there were no discussions. This is part of the problem. How you Mark, treat your Mark, people. Mark, it's not public comment. I don't care. You Mark, it's not public you. comment. You're going to have to leave. Mm -hmm. So these these bills that were obtained were, were obtained as part of a joint process, joint public meetings, and you're telling me the board's not going to pay it. Not at this time, no. Okay. Um, I have a motion to make. Hold on a second. Um, we kind of did this thing on like a four to one ratio, right? Okay. So, uh, Jill, could you direct that the clerk treasurer uh, itemize all of the bills related to this at that ratio of four to one? And uh, please send that to the uh, township trustee's office. Mr. Parker, you had a motion? In. Uh I want to leave an opportunity to negotiate this contract. What does the council need to make this contract happen? I think we told you already. Everything is that, that we have. We couldn't even do it if we wanted to. Our appropriation for our QM fund is 100000 It's 120 there, which means we can't give it a lot. And I don't think that would be right to the taxpayers. Well, you know, no, Mitch, areas. I kept hearing the people that you represent, they kept saying there has to be another way. There has to be another way. Now, we present another way. We presented, pre presented a plan B, and that's not good enough either. So it's what you and your township advisory board proposed to us, or I'm viewing it. It's either that or nothing. I don't know how the rest of you are viewing it, but that's how I'm viewing it. No, because this contract was negotiated prior to the fire territory. This contract was never negotiated because there wasn't supposed to be a contract. That is completely false. Mitch. There was always going to be a contract for this year. There was. We always needed a contract for this year. And again, this contract is for 2018. Mitch, there was no negotiation on this contract. This is what you proposed. No, because I did receive a prior contract to this from the town. Then me and my board went over that contract, and this is our counter proposal to that contract. This is what you proposed for a contract. This we is, never said this is what the contract was going to be. This is our counter to the, to the original contract. That's not how you negotiate. How do you negotiate? We said that this wasn't going to work. 
we all agree that's not going to work. Uh, and we said the contract that you put forth is not going to work because the township is not going to empty out this piggy bank. So let me ask you a Thank question, you. quick. So adding up these numbers minus the twenty thousand that you said can't be appropriated, mm -hmm. it's a total of two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. That will give you a hundred and fifteen thousand. 215,000. I've got it would be 100 from the fume. I've got 115. I've got 115 mm -hmm. plus the 65. No, because that 120 uh, is coming from that cumulative fund. So, how much can I get to my one? Is it the 100 you're talking about? Is that where the 100 comes in? Right, the 120. Okay. Is I got the I have a hundred twenty in Q okay. right now. Okay. Of which we are and that's putting fire six trucks and things like that. Right. right. That's for equipment and stuff like that. And okay. we're putting sixty five on the contract. Now normally I get forty thousand dollars from my levy for Q. Okay. So we are putting the the entire amount that I'm receiving for the year, which is forty. I'm putting the entire amount I'm getting for the lawyer, which is twenty. <coughs> And I, it's about 60, but I, we put 65. We round up to 65. Because okay. the town has stated they needed a minimum of 180. So that's where the one for this year. Okay. Uh, I put a contract together that will give the town the 180 that was talked about back in January from the original contract. I guess I don't understand, Mitch, because, okay, if you're getting 40,000 in your cumulative fire, mm -hmm. right, and you've already got 120,000, correct? Of which I can only spend a hundred. Okay, so that's one forty right there. Do we agree on that no. number? No, no, because I cannot spend that forty. That forty is part of the fuel. So by the end of the year, what can that be spent on, Mitch? What's that? What can that be spent on? The forty in the queue. I can spend it in equipment and repairs, but I would not be able to spend it this year. As the most I can spend this year would be a hundred thousand. And if I spend 100000 this year, I might not be appropriated anywhere near that amount next year. So I would be stealing from next year's contract to pay for this contract. It would not be sustainable for the township. Possibly. So if, if possibly. So the 115. Most likely. Okay. okay. So 115 minus the 40, since you can't spend it that, this year, that's collected this year, spent next year, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Now I get where this is coming from. And then there's a hundred thousand that's spendable, that's mm -hmm. available funds, plus the one fifteen comes up to two hundred and fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. But if I spend a hundred, uh, it would cap my what I will be able to spend next year. If, but if, if it's, but if it's needed, is it? If it's needed, and again, my board, if we go to the board and there is a need, they will not deny that purchase. Okay, were any examples given in your board meeting of what would constitute a need? Uh, we, we have not, well, I know they need that respirator uh, machine to fill up their, their tank. That's a must because it's not up to date. And it's, it's I just didn't know if there was any discussion on, on what, what but constitutes the, the, the definition of a need. Because it, in, in uh, emergency services, everything. Well, in, 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 the, in the past, like the purchasing of bunk gear, because they, they, their bunk <coughs> gear was past his years, and it was something that had to be replaced right away. Because Todd has never come to a council meeting with anything but an emergency request. Right. But because everything is an emergency in, in emergency services, it just is that way. Right. So that's, that's why I'm, I was confused by the word need can can construe that there's discretion when the fire chief says hey i need it well no you don't well he says yes i do who wins that argument well uh for an example i guess it would be um whining of a drone versus whining on that equipment to fill up the, the air tanks the board might feel that a new drone might not be necessary at this time well, we know that the equipment that they need to fill up their air tanks has to happen right away. So there is discretionary definition uh, interpretation allowed for 
Um, of course there is. The word need. Of course there is. So even if the fire chief says, I need a drone in order to do X, Y, or Z, whatever they use drones for, mm -hmm. then gotcha. the township board may say, well, I don't agree with that. They never have. And, 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 and that they're not going to approve something the fire chief says that they need. Or, or it's possible. If, if it states why that drone is needed, an example, again, the board has not denied any equipment that the fire department has requested. Okay. It hasn't happened. Do the council members have any questions or, or comments for? Yeah, I, 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 I still have a comment. I mean, we're running a municipality here, a police department, a fire department, a public works, and a lot of other things. And I think I'd rather have a contract with an exact amount attached to it. I think everybody would. So we know what we have, we know what we're going to get, and we know if we need something we can get. This sending somebody from the clerk's office or the fire department out to negotiate with the township, who it is, would be a, 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 it's a vendor client relationship, is nonsense. It has worked in the past. We have done this. It, it, this relationship goes back many years and it has worked. <clears throat> and, and I can tell you exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get 115000 uh, in two payments, one in, at the end of June, one at the end of December. And we will assist with purchases in the amount of 65000 And you can give us a list of the, what is required, what is needed. The board will go over those, they can approve the purchases, and you will have that equipment. So if the board doesn't approve a purchase? Give me a list of 20 items. 10 of them, I'm sure, it will be approved. So you have? No, I, I'm up to the 65,000, which is what we got. I, I, don't, I don't know why we're still doing this, honestly, I don't know. Okay. We're not representing. We're not representing our constituents correctly by continuing to have this kind of dialogue. Okay, I I got a question. Yeah. We get the hundred and fifty. We get the other money that you're talking about. Now, we've got a we got a truck. We got the township truck that just broke that needs new pumps. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost us twenty five thousand dollars. Would the township be able to come up with that other twenty-five thousand to fix it? That is our equipment, and yes, we will repair it. And then we'll also buy the uh, what the fire department needs for their air tanks, and that's another thirty right there. That's fifty-five thousand. I got another ten thousand dollars if you have another purchase. That's, that's, that's what you're saying, but you're going to go to your advisory board, and whatever they say is what's going. Just like you can't sign the contract, you can't negotiate the fire territory. You. I mean, basically, you're muted. So you're telling us that the advisory board is going to do whatever you're telling us that they're going to do, but we don't know that because they haven't done it so far. They have in the past. Yes, Mitchell, they have. Mitchell, when you are doing the bills, you can approve those on your own. Mitch, um, the 115000 What? where does that number come from? Okay. That's everything that we are receiving for fire and EMS service. And who do you receive that from? State. Is that from the county or it's appropriated through the state? Right. And there's an established levy for that number? Correct. And can that levy be increased? Can it be, is there growth factors in it? No, right now we're going to be uh, working on increasing our cumulative fund. We're at our max levies. So, but yeah, that, that one is uh, the max levy. Are there any sort of petitions that you can make to the, the state on, on, in that uh, respect? On that? Well, again, what we're working on is to increase the max levy uh, to the 0 .033, which is going like a 0 .028. The fire and EMS, <coughs> we asked for the maximum levy. They were cut, rate reduced due to increased assessed valuation both of those funds that's the credit balancing of the got it that that's where they we come up with the hundred and fifteen thousand on the ems which is fund 1101 and the fire which is 1111 that's where we come up with that 
Now the cumulative fund rate is what is our 0 0.0222 or something. We have to go through a process like you guys will have to when you enact your cumulative fund, Greg. You have that right to do that, you know. I, I understand that. Okay. Right. So, we can't, we can't continue so now we, that, right. I'm going to talk now. We, we had this cumulative fund going a long time. And I think it's absolutely disrespectful to the citizens who helped us accumulate this to just hand it flat out over. So that it doesn't have I talked to Mr. Wilkening in the process of the fire territory. And we talked about expenditures on equipment, buildings, land. Those are the statutory requirements of the cumulative fund and repairs to equipment. And I have never, not in my years, denied a reasonable request. Okay? So, so uh, but Mr. Newman, uh, you're looking at the cost for the people that you represent. I have to look at the cost for the people that I represent. Sir, it's, then you should have. How many years you been on this board? How many years you been on this board? Why didn't you establish a cumulative fund? I, Rich, we only got the fire department in 2013. I'm not stuttering. Well, why didn't you get the fire department? Why didn't you Why didn't you take it over? You took it over. I didn't. You took it over. They're your employees. It has to be funded, Rich. It had okay. to be funded. I, I have I have a very little about, about the about equipment. Okay, I've heard Mitch say a couple of times, if it's your equipment, you'll fix it. Okay, we send out equipment that the town has purchased and owns out to the township to respond to calls. So if some of that equipment needs repair, you won't fix it. No, we have. We have it. Just it's we a have it. I'm I'm to We will do repair. We're trying Welcome. to get clarity. We will do repairs. Mr. Welcome. The the township has paid for repairs to the our fire trucks over the years. I'm just going on what I heard. And, and, all. Yeah, in in, in uh, town owned trucks as well. So okay. uh, it's it's been a two way street. Again, when it it, to that. We understand Can this equipment time? has to be kept running, and again, we have never denied any major repairs to any of the equipment. Uh, purchases, major purchases. We just request that uh, we I made aware. <coughs> before the purchase is made, especially if we will be paying for those purchases, and set, have the vendor send the bill to us and be titled in the township's name. So um, out of that 40,000 CUM fund that you're collecting this year, could you dedicate that to debt service on something that's that's purchased with debt service in arrears? Possibly, such as what? Let's say a, a, a rescue truck, just for example. Let's say that that payment's thirty thousand bucks a year, and you haven't collected that forty thousand. But could you dedicate it? We could possibly dedicate it. Yes. Okay. Because a lot of times when we purchase things on these lease purchase yeah. programs, the the payments are in arrears, so you can actually collect the money first before you pay it out. Right. Randy. Mr. Neymar. When the fire truck was purchased, I believe that's what they did. They dedicated the. Uh, levy for the cum fund to that debt service now as is mentioned we can get cut and you're very well aware of that but the only problem I have is you know when we accumulate this money it is for these large purchases but let's say the 40,000 which is actually 39.9 this year that we will get could 30,000 of that be used towards the purchase of an emergency truck yeah it can. I think it can legally be done. Am I correct in that, sir? It has been done in the past. Yeah. And, yeah. and the township did commit to a uh, twice a year payment, I think, Terry, I think it was. And then on top of that, when there was more money available, the trustee would contact us and say, hey, I have, actually have more money available for additional equipment by the end of the year. So it would get more equipment. So essentially, that makes the available funds go up from 215 to actually 255, should there be a need for it. Yes. I just don't yeah, think. But again, the appropriation, how much we are allowed to spend, would be about 215 at the max. The contract that we're proposing guarantees us and commits us to spending 180,000. And, and Mr. Neymar, I hear what you're saying about you know accumulating monies and, and the representation of your constituents. Um, in, in the town that I represent, we have spent every single dime that we've had available for emergency services on emergency it, services it, it, as part of our duty. We can respectfully disagree on that. I think it is duty bound that when there is money that the taxpayers have put into the, the trough, that it, it be spent on that 
um, <coughs> service of that purpose. I agree with you. I agree with you. And it wouldn't be cumulative money was, a, was accumulated by the unincorporated citizens. Okay. Right, and it was for what emergency services? Could be. Or a part of other things. Particular, particular items of equipment. Can only be used for emergency services. That's right. Can't be used for anything else. For so if, whether you were contracted with us or somebody else, yeah. I think it would probably make the same request: is that any money available be made available for that purpose? It might. That's all. It might. Well, I, it, would I, mean, see, this, I would see. I would see. Absolutely. I, I think it'd be just ridiculous for us to uh, take that fund and completely drain it out. Because as as Mitch has said, come next year, I don't know what you're going to do. Oh, true. I mean, this this is this public funding thing is a is a continual problem, and, yeah. and we tried to address it through the fire territory, which was voted down. Mm -hmm. There was essentially thirty people that that kind of turned this thing mm -hmm. around, um, and we've seen that a lot in in government where the vocal minority has to say, and it's okay. And we still have the same problems going forward. But mm -hmm. but we're going to be facing this thing year after year after year. And the school, after seven years of their referendum that they passed a couple of years ago, that thing expires and they have to do it again anyway. So we're not going to get away from this public funding thing by punting all the time. So we've got to figure out how to get past this year and then do something different and more foundational and sustainable going forward because this is not sustainable. My dad makes a good point that it's not sustainable. But I think we also make a good point that there are dire needs that were spelled out extremely clearly within the process. You can disagree with London Witty all you want. The fire chief put together a, a pretty succinct, a succinct uh, presentation that included capital needs of the department. So uh, what I want in this discussion is just to understand if there's access to the money that the taxpayers have already paid into uh, funds to be used for public safety. Which is why we put on here that we would pay uh, up to 165 thousand dollars in equipment and repairs. A hundred sixty-five thousand in equipment and repairs. I'm sorry. Up to yeah. sixty-five. Up to sixty-five? Yeah. Right. Because that makes it a total of one eighty. One eighty? I'm giving you the one fifteen plus up to sixty-five thousand. And that's that we're committed. Doesn't mean that we won't spend any more <laughs> on added. But we are committed sixty-five thousand dollars from those funds to purchase equipment and repairs this year and there's still this 120 sitting out here is that correct no I, i've included that on there because again i'm i only pull in 40 plus to 20 creates about 60. that's where i came up with that amount of 65. because your reno contract was asking for about 180. and and that that other money that's sitting there is kind of a, an upon request as needed basis yes because we so there it is a cumulative fund. There's money there. A cumulative fund that you can't get the contract. It's for saving up money for future purchases. Can we establish a number that, that's like a a top number, a top line on this thing? Because um, I this is kind of we got 180,000 base contract, but where's where's the top number? Because we know the 40,000 in Q money could be dedicated to debt service and a purchase in arrears, as was. Done with the last fire truck, um, twenty thousand of the one hundred twenty that's in the piggy bank can't be spent because a hundred thousand has been appropriate. The most we would be able to spend this year would be two hundred and fifteen. I don't think that's right. I think that is a hundred thousand from the fuel fund that we have been appropriated, and a hundred and fifteen that we get for fire and EMS. That's that separate the, from the forty and twenty. That is. No, that is where that money's coming from. That is that is the most you'd be able to spend, but that's not the most you'd be able to dedicate. That additional forty would be able to be dedicated if there were an equipment purchase, like we said. Yeah, earlier. well, that would be dedicated for the following year, twenty nineteen. Right, so it'd be spent twenty nineteen, but but dedicated in twenty eighteen. Yeah, but that wouldn't be a part of this contract. This contract's only for twenty eighteen. I get it, but but there might be a, a vehicle or something that that needs to be purchased, and it's delivered this year so we would still need to have some understanding that okay it's purchased and let's say that all, all of a sudden next year there's no contract now there's a, a purchased vehicle with, well I'm hoping with that uh, we do a contract in November instead of waiting all the way till I don't April and May to try to get this done 
we were in the middle of that fire territory process and it just got kind of pushed back. Right, so right now I just want a contract for this year. Uh, we're four months into the year. But can you agree that, that okay, there's 215,000 max available, but that other 40 could be dedicated with, with some, probably a need for some negotiation between us to, for there to be an understanding of some carryover. Right, but I am not gonna drain the whole 215 or whatever it is this year because I may need that for a down payment on that vehicle. I'll tell you what, we drain every single penny that we have every year for public safety. Every penny. We don't get to hold anything back. But you don't have a huge fund. We do. And a huge fund is specifically for saving up money for major capital purchase in the future. Yep. And, it is and, not an operational fund. And when we have a QM fund established, which we will, um, we're going to dedicate it to the things that it's supposed to be dedicated for. And that's what we're trying to do. Okay. That is exactly what we're trying to do. Any other discussion, questions for Mr. Lopez? <coughs> Mitch, did you say that if it hadn't been London Witty, you, you guys would have proved it? Talking to my board, uh, one of the biggest issues that they had was with London Witty from the very beginning, they did not trust the numbers when she actually stated that it would not affect the taxpayers. Yeah, they didn't trust us, they didn't trust the fire. Yeah, from, from that moment, you're right. From that moment, you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, from that I'm moment, right. I That's believe right. some people closed their minds, did not listen to anything else that had to be said because there was no trust with that particular advisor. No, I, I think that, that the numbers that ended up coming out were extremely transparent and visible and, and real. Oh, I agree, but perception that those numbers were incorrect became the reality to those people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. A lot of people go to church, and in church it, 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 it espouses that when people make mistakes or haven't done things 100% right, that there's a, a, a time of redemption, but except for when these things happen. Well, the problem, uh, from my observation, was London Witty giving opinion and shooting from the hip instead of actually doing the research to give it a correct answer. I remember answer. right, people asked her a question before she had the information to. And I'm, I'm right, I understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with what I'm doing with you, I'm an advisor myself. I mean, somebody asked me a question, it's like, you know what, that's a great question. I don't know the answer. Let me find out for you. And that would have been a better answer? And that would have been the right answer. But with the pitchforks and torches in the room, I, th I feel like she felt like she was a little bit under pressure and, but, and had to come up with something. Possibly so, but that created and, and there was no there was no malfeasance, there was no malice, there was no intent. I, I don't believe there was any of that. I believe that again because she misspoke and people could see that the information was not right at the very beginning, people stopped listening to what she has to say. Say after that. Well, if that was the case, like Greg said earlier, we should have just cut it off right there. Yeah, why did we do that? Because you guys didn't want to. Well, that there was there was two parties. Well, was two I, parties I did not realize. If I, you had ever said that you were not interested in pursuing the fire territory, we could have quit right then. I was good with that, certainly. I was interested in pursuing the fire territory, and I I went out and I talked to people. I did the presentation of the numbers myself to those people. Tried to explain. So people, I did a lot of work on trying to get that and, through. And, and, and did you talk to a lot of the, the uh, township residents who didn't show up at those uh, public forums? And what I did. Their I did, right? and a lot of those people had wanted the fire territory to go through. When I was putting the banner out there uh, about the meeting, two people actually stopped and said, well, it's about time, because they knew what it was. But those people never showed up to the meetings. So it was the vocal minority that ruled this. The ones that are involved, they Any other questions or comments from the council for Mr. Lopez? Okay, there's uh, an item for consideration that's been deferred one, two, three, four times. Um, is there a motion on the ambulance and EMS fire protection services agreement? I'm limited to defer. And, and they can we sit down in executive session and negotiate with them? Possibly. I'll render an opinion on that in writing. We've had the same contract 
put forth and I would like my contract to either be voted on, yes or no. Uh, again, this would be six times if it comes up here one more time. Mr. President, let me correct Mr. So, Siebel, if you don't mind. You've never given us a contract. I've drafted every one of the contracts that have been either here or to your board. Every one of them. I've gotten a couple of memos, a couple of emails with a couple of points, but you have never presented one to us. Well, and, and I don't want to guess, unless my counsel tells me to guess, about drafting any more on this until there are certain terms that are agreed on. And that's what I'm trying to get to is some certainty. So if there is a consideration tonight, we have a number that's, that's a top number that, that we can go to as like a not to exceed. And we do a lot of that stuff in contracting with vendors. Uh, in our, it's not to exceed X amount of dollars. Um, that's probably the number that we need to put in a contract. Um, but then there, I think there would need to be an addendum to that that would include that if there is a purchase that can be made with the human funds that you're collecting this year and appropriating next year, and it's agreed upon by the township board that that be made a part of the writing of this contract. And, and, and if, I, if I may simply go, the very first time it got brought up, that was the one that we had received from the town. And I came up here and I stated that we wanted to change the wording on section three. Uh, which Mr. Austin did, right? Of the, of the covenant, right? That is the contract that we're asking a vote on. Because that's the contract that I took to my board and explained to the, my, my board and the board was okay with that contract. So how about another counter proposal? The not to exceed two hundred fifteen thousand with the additional. I, I, I can't do that because that would be to empty everything that is on there. And again, I'm putting forth exactly what was I originally asked for. But you for. have exactly what you're asking for, which is say over the additional funds. It's but, but my counter proposal was to still give you the 180 that was on the original contract that was what was requested by the town. Because you yourself asked me, so that, that contract still gave us the 180, and I said yes. Because that's what we budgeted for. Because that's what you budgeted for, and that's what I'm trying to give you right now. Right, and, and we're coming with another counter proposal. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for a not to exceed of 215 plus an addendum but, up to 40 if it's dedicated wow. to what you're But if you agree, if you ask me for 180 and I agree to 180, and then you're like, well, if you agree to 180, how about 215? That is not fair. That is not a proper way to negotiate. It is a proper way to negotiate. Right now, the tail's wagging the dog. I don't think not that's how this works. It's been raised after the proposal was made. Hey, you made a, there was an original proposal made. You made a right. counter proposal. We're right. counter proposal. Counter -proposal. counter -proposal. Right, with a much higher amount. That's not much higher. It's a not to exceed. And you guys would have control of that between 180 and 215. You'd have total control of it. Well, you could exceed the 180 if approved by my board on, on the particular purchase. I'm giving you a, a 180 from our funds. Mitch, I'm trying to establish a top number here. Can't do that. Randy, it's impossible to do that without this board voting because they have to approve it. Okay, that's fine. Well, that's fine. But, and, and they can vote on it. And, and vote to approve or not approve the counter proposal. Nobody's saying it has to be approved tonight. So, uh, again, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll make a motion we defer this item until May 1st. There's a motion to defer. And uh, uh, before deferring, uh, since you had not received a copy of the contract that we were proposing, uh, I do have a copy of that. Contract. And that contract is the same one that I asked for when I was here last. I had it, um, a section four stating that uh, capital assets purchased with uh, those funds be had on the township name. And that will be under covenant section four. And, and what I'm trying to get to here, Mitch, is that if our fire chief says he needs it, I want to know how, how far he can he can go with a need. Because if we don't have a top number on this somewhere, 
then everything is just a guessing game. And then we're gonna end up putting a bill for everything like we do anyways. I understand, my current top number will be 180. Okay, that's not our top number. <laughs> my motion still can't stand to defer this. There's a motion to defer. defer. Is there a second on the motion made by Councilman Parker? Second. <coughs> second by Councilmember Sharp. Are there any questions or discussion on the motion? Roll call vote. Robert Cunningham? Yes. <coughs> Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Greg Parker? Yes. Randall Niemeyer? No. Motion carries four to one. So call a board meeting, get your people okay. together, and see if we can figure this out. I have to figure it out um, before June 30th. We will not be making a payment until we have a contract. And also, uh, you'll be getting a bill from the town for the professional services as well. Okay. We're not going to keep doing this, Mitch. Yeah, so I, I, I want it to be done today. I'm oh, talking about it. I want it to be done today. Thanks for your, thanks for your time and I appreciate the answering questions, Mitch. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have no committee reports tonight. Those are on our work session. Thank you. Uh, next, we have town council reports. Is there any town council reports? Town attorney? Clerk treasurer? Town administrator? No report. Staff? Okay, uh, written communications, uh, Christopher Burke, engineering. Council, it's an update on the projects that are currently undergoing. We have an ecosystem restoration uh, update meeting next Monday. You have your subdivision projects currently underway in High Grove and South Shore. They want all or nothing. That's your summary on the roof. Okay, uh, building department report. Your building department reports included in your packet. Um, we currently have 23 new home permits as of the end of March with a residential value of $3,326,604 and 55 alteration permits here today with a value of $1,152,999. Thank you. Um, next, we have Tom Strikes Out Cancer donation request. Council, this is a request for Tom Strikes Out Cancer. There are various contribution levels included. It's for your information. Okay, thank you. Now we move to public comment. This is open public comment on anything you'd like to talk about. That was very interesting. Thank you. I'm glad you stuck around. Me too. You know I like him. Um, my name's Becky Gover at 11521 West 127th Lane. I'm hoping you have some news for me on our wicker metal spreading issue. I think it's awesome that Cedar Lake is building numerous subdivisions. However, do you know how many years we have been going over this flooding issue? How many? Many. I don't know the exact number, but uh, more than a decade. Yes, sir. And has it been resolved? Town Administrator, would you give her a report, please? No, you're supposed to say, no, it's not been resolved. It has. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, as you know, there's been some improvements to the area. Um, as directed, negotiations are occurring with property owners. Um, as you know, there was a new property owner to the area, so those discussions are continuing. I do not have any other update other than a meeting has been scheduled for um, the upcoming week. A meeting as in meeting with the new owners? Yes. They're very nice. I did see them out there with and I can't remember his name. He is an engineer. He's an engineer, but he's not from the town. So they're aware of something going on. Yeah, I think the Weigels told them about the potential of a project, so I, I believe they're aware. But we're going to have a meeting with the owners of the property this week. I'll be in that meeting, and uh, we'll make sure that, that their focus is on getting a project done, because I'm tired of seeing you come here 
although I like you, well, and talk about this project. Yeah. I want you to talk about other things. Oh, well, you know, I, I do like it. But I like people to also understand it is not just me that floods. The gentleman around the curve whose knees came on. That whole neighborhood in the it, back end of it. Yeah, nine feet. Yeah. Okay, so that's a lot more than me. But yeah, it is bad. But when you talk to the people, uh, if you, they're new, they have not got a single animal, not even a dog. Can you believe it? Why would you buy that? Except, I believe they're waiting to talk to the town mm -hmm. to see you know, what's going on, because I know they do plan to get one or two horses. I don't know what they're allowed. But I don't remember anymore what the whole thing is, if they're putting those drains and then they're going down. If so, if you can tell them the covers, uh, damn, are they called the covers like you put over those big drains? We, people who live on farms call them cattle crossing the metal over so you could still have a hooved animal that went by but it doesn't fit in there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If that could be explained to them so that they still could have their animals that could go out there. You know, they, they probably won't understand that. They're newer. Just trying to help them. Thanks, Becky. Okay, thank you. That's always good to see you. Good to Sorry, see you. Josh wasn't here. Is there any other public comment? Yes, first, before I say what I need to want to say, I would like to ask uh, the police department if we could have a request for the girls' softball fields. I've talked to... Uh, uh, first, you got to state your name and address. You guys don't know I am. Mark Stanger, 139 25 Wicker Avenue. Thanks, Bob. Uh, we're having a big issue over there with uh, somebody tearing the parking lot up. They tore it up last fall. Uh, I know who it was at the time. Uh, I talked to Jason Lande because he lives over there. Jason uh, tried to take care of the situation. He talked to some people for us. And uh, what are they doing, Mark? Like doing donuts? Oh or? yeah, they just tore the parking lot up. And as you know, we we are at the bottom of the subdivision. We take all the water drainage from everybody, so we keep our park water going to the tracks like it's supposed to. So we just put over 17 loads of stone in that parking lot. My neighbor Norman worked in it for uh, three or four days, eight hours a day. We got that lot looking beautiful. People were just loving it until somebody went over there and did it again. So I got the main lot straight out with our tractor. That I just, me and my dad went by the north lot and then store up too. Um, until we can afford to get a camera system, which we talked about, we're going to do something. Uh, if they could just maybe go through there once in a while. I mean, Jason has been watching for us, but um, as far as the uh, fire territory thing, I think we got a kind of a taste of how we thought the territory was going to go. You guys want the upper hand. You guys want all our money. It, it can't work that way. We we don't trust anybody. Greg made the comment. I'm going to tell you that's correct. You guys went for an annexation, blew over 300 grand and would have paid for three or four firemen to help that out. That's completely false. Really? What was the bill, Greg? I, you know, I don't want to get, I'm not, I'm not getting in an argument discussion. I just want to make a statement. The bottom line is, we see what's going on. We see the upper hand. We see how the fire territory would have been put together, the board. We can see how it's going to roll. It's, 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 you guys just don't get it. You get out of people how you treat people. Do you know that fire department would have a lot more money if people would treat people with respect? I've been in this town my whole life. Clarify, Mark. What are you saying? I'm, I'm going to clarify it right Go now. Ahead. You're correct. I'm going to clarify it because I've been trying to say it for a long time. You say it. You people all brag about our fire department and the people that run it. How wonderful it is. I have seen firsthand, I have talked to numerous firemen, I've been accused of lying, I've been accused of not getting my facts straight. I'm not going to mention names as who said that on this board. But I have called, I've talked to people, I'm not the guy putting it out there because I'm the guy that went out and got the facts. You cannot sit and scold people and yell at people and scream at people when there's a fire. And I think we all know that's happened. You will, when Bob Everly was the fire chief, you got a great response with people. Okay. 
current fire chief, I've witnessed him scolding people, yelling at people. You can't do that. And that's what I've been trying to get at. It's time for you people to get somebody new that will run that, prop, that, that department correctly. We have asked you people since August, what is the current debt of the fire department? You guys would not give us the answer till the night of the vote. Why? Are you hiding it? We're hiding that we pay down all We're just dollars. asking. We're asking. We asked for anything. For Randy, I asked. I, we, we, Rose Klein, uh, Wayne Stoll, we've all asked for these numbers. Nobody seemed, they, they seem to go around it until the night of the vote. That is not how you do things. You've got to tell us the truth. We, we told you the truth all throughout the process, Mark. So, so, so what the, they asked what the current debt was, the night of the vote, you guys looked at Amy's son, and guess what? Hey, what was the debt? And Amy blurted it out. How could we couldn't get that in all? Amy had to go in her office and get it. Okay, how could we couldn't get that in the other? I'm not sure. That question was asked, and, and the people who were in Well, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the, that's what, those are the we, questions we're looking for. We've got nothing to hide. We've paid down most of the debt. We've got lower debt in our fire department than I fire understand department that now, what you're saying, but we have asked the question, Randy, since August. Okay. That's and what it, we're it, talking about. And it was answered. At the, the day of the vote. Okay, but it was still answered. How many people answer? stood up here and said the same thing I said, Randy? Well, people uh, people stand up there, Mark, and accuse us of things that are totally rumor and innuendo, and they're false. Well, same thing with me. I've heard it from people here. Have I ever accused you of anything? I'm not going to mention names. Right, I haven't. I'm not going to mention names. I didn't say I didn't say your names. Right, I'm just saying that, that there's a lot of stuff that comes up here um, in front of us where we've got to sit and take these. But would we come up and say things? You know what, you guys just... All these meetings we've been having, we ask for numbers on property, the numbers for that fire territory. You guys have gave us a plan that you didn't have anybody offered property. How much was the property? What was it going to take to build the building? All those needed to be defined so that we knew what we were looking at. Because the board hadn't even been established to discuss that. So there had been a 50-50 board, two unincorporated residents, two town residents, and a, and a tiebreaker person. So if we go to the fire territory, we got three Cedar Lake residents versus two Hanover Township residents. We've seen just now tonight okay, what's going to happen. Right, right now, the funding of, of it is is 85 to 15 percent, and and we were willing to cede, give up 60 percent or 40 percent of that control of that board because we thought it was the right thing to do, create a balance. Who was looking to give up 60 percent? I said 40 percent. I'm sorry, I corrected myself. So if there would have been three town residents, so two town council members, two township elected officials, and a third person from Hanover Township that lived in the town, would have been, if, if you want to calculate like you're calculating, a 60-40 split. Right now, the town is picking up 85% of the bill to 15% of the bill. Well, I'm here, I make so, so if you, if you balance the say, like you would like in a corporation, in a business, mm -hmm. if you balance the say on the amount of money that a person puts into it, the township is actually getting much more say by having a board like that than, than what they even get now. Not if two three Cedar Lake memberships are on there. Yeah it is. It's 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 a it's if a sixty forty split. That that math can't be disputed. It's it's general math. If there's three Cedar Lake residents on a fire territory board and two Hanover Township residents. It's sixty forty. You're in your favor. Just like we see tonight. Okay. So so hang on. So so pay forty. So pay fifty percent of the bill and get fifty percent of the say. Let me ask you guys a question. The bill. You guys had to have the ambulance service. Why doesn't the fire department get rid of the ambulance service? Subcontract out like we used to do. You would relieve so much expense, equipment, personnel. No, we wouldn't. Oh, really? And I'll tell you why. Why? Because all of those EMT and and paramedics are cross trained as firefighters. You're so we would have to hire firefighters to replace them. You'd have a lot more money because you no, just got rid of the ambulance. We wouldn't. <laughs> we wouldn't have cross trained people. <laughs> That's not true. How, how how is East Chicago and everybody <laughs> else doing this? East Chicago has has uh, yeah. steel yeah. mill and refineries in their community. We don't. Yeah. They've got a tax base. We did it before, did we not? Yeah, at, at a much lower level of population, half the population of what we have now. Okay, well, here's the here's what the perception is for the Hanover Township Presidents. It seems to be your way or no way. You guys no. seem to tell us things that you think we want to hear, and that's what we're hearing. I'm just letting you know what I hear. Okay, Mark, we have a job to do to represent the residents of Cedar Lake. We did that throughout annexation. We did that throughout this process of a fire territory. Let me ask a question. What did you guys take the annexation all the way to the state Supreme Court for and waste 300 grand? 
That would have bought a couple firemen for him. Because we, we believe that we were right, and now that we You really believe you guys were going to win in state Supreme Court when you lost twice? Absolutely. Okay. Can I address that, please? No. Thank you. <laughs> uh, public comment? Wow. Well, I'm uh, Pat Slurry, 157.14, in first place, and this dire ad just been saying we crossing. First of all, I'd like to address the, we're still looking at our wounds from the lack of the territory. But there's no talk here about what the territory would have brought. A lot of talk about maintenance of equipment, more equipment, but equipment ain't going to be broke down anybody drove by anybody. That territory was going to help the personnel. Mm -hmm. So you got to realize that we're going to have another 1,080 houses here in the next two years. This fall, we're going to have two high schools, and we could be in, in Center Township on a call, and, and Ileana Christian's got a kid that's not breathing. All right, peanut an allergy, seizure. We're talking 15 minutes from the station. We're increase our our uh, response time. Pat, part of if I can interrupt, sure. Part of the discussion about equipment is because of what the townships limited in what they can do with their funds. I understand. But if they can relieve some of the burden of the equipment on us, we can focus more to the personnel. I, I understand. That's the balance of yes. this thing, and okay. that we're looking to strike with this top number. And that's what we're looking to get to is a point where we have some balance. So we can do our part in supporting the, the personnel because you can have as many trucks and four-wheelers and snowmobiles as you want. If there's nobody to, right. to put behind the wheel, it doesn't matter. That's the point I was getting to. As far as the, the volunteer system as a whole, our chief, and I've said this before, this man eats, sleeps, and shits, you pardon my French, this town. For somebody to go over and say that this man yells and screams at, what, what? Hey, Pat, why don't you address me? I'm sorry. It's okay. You, you I'm, I'm, I'm kind of upset. If somebody says okay. something like that about the chief in front of me and my partner here, is ridiculous. Uh, this volunteer system is, is falling apart statewide, world, not worldwide, but within this entire country. Maryville, all the other communities are having trouble maintaining their volunteers. We talked about that before, why this is happening. It's got nothing to do with our fire scenes. And some of the people who made those comments were never on our fire scenes. He's here secondhand, thirdhand talk. The thing, I'm a former member of East Chicago Fire Department. And presently, East Chicago Fire Department is trying to get their ambulance back because it was a big mistake. It's EMS a la carte. Everything's, you, okay, we're, the town's going to save money, but guess what? These folks will be paying more for an ambulance if it shows up. It, it might be coming from Dyer. It might be coming from Munster. Because what? An ambulance is not sitting there. A private ambulance sitting there is not making any money. You know, I've, I've heard the same things about Todd and Denny both, about on calls that they uh, direct a call with, with a lot of force and, and that they're, they're vocal. And when I'm in a crisis situation myself, like in my business, if there's something that, that requires my leadership to be out front and everybody know who's the leader, I get pretty loud too. So I, I don't necessarily look at that as a bad thing. It's part of our training. Right. And in the fire service, you had to do a little thick skin of things because, you know, things are said. But... This, this man here has not ever, and I've been doing this quite a few years, and I've had other chiefs, and he's no different than any other chief. He's not scared of anybody else. If, they, if he scares somebody with because they didn't get thick skin, but it's, it's all for the betterment and the safety of the firefighter himself. If he's going to make a mistake, he's not yelling and screaming at everybody. Again, it continues the misinformation that gentleman was giving to this board and to the township. Not if I've witnessed it, sir. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Stanger, you had your time. Mr. Scalari, is address. I never address saw him in the fire scene. I've been here three years. I've never seen him in the fire scene. I'm sorry. Watch. Gentlemen, that's it. We don't need any more side comments. We got the gentleman right. up there. Anyway, you got, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. But it's just a nice day to let somebody slander the chief. I appreciate it, Pat. Mr. Kuyper, you have anything? Uh, Brian Kuyper, 6904 West 145th Avenue in Cedar Lake. Um, uh, I just want to go on record that I thought it was uncalled for for somebody to slander somebody who uh, uh, tries to betterment this community and make it better. And I completely resent that remark that was made. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. There's one other thing. I'm yes, sir. It's okay. We talk about what the fire department needs. This community needs this. The fire department needs this stuff for the community. Well, it's not just our community of Cedar Lake. It's, you know, Fire departments are, are one of the great formulations of and creations of municipal government because they serve on so many different platforms. And when there's a call for aid, it doesn't matter where you're from or who they're responding to, they go. I mean, I've, I've seen already fires here in Cedar Lake where I see Beecher trucks driving through. I see Creek, I see uh, Lake Dale, I see St. John. 
that is one of the, the most incredible brotherhoods ever. So I'm hoping that the township board takes this information back, considers establishing a top number so we know where our range is, so we can we can balance this thing a little bit better and be able to provide this service at a little better level than what we're doing right now. Right, and, and as far as being in Hanover Township, I came as the streets 102nd, Mondorf, in my neighborhood here, and nobody knew about what was going on here at all. So I never, I never, my city sent out carts, I never got a cart. I live in Hanover Township, and I came with so many people not to talk about it, and they didn't even know the vote was no. One of the police officers who works for the railway says, how did it go? Not good. So he didn't know nothing about it. I've heard a lot more positive things about it than what I heard negative, and it's just, you know, it, it is an example of a vocal minority that, that has their way, and, and unfortunately, sometimes that's how it is. The people that, you don't see many rallies in Washington of somebody saying, I'm for something. Right. They go in there against something. So thanks for your time. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Any other public comment? Third and final call. Public comment is closed. Our next town council public meeting will be May first, twenty eighteen, at seven p.m. This meeting is adjourned.